I am so happy to be here. It is an honor to be here today speaking to you and talking about the people of God, one of my favorite subjects. Um, I have, am coming up here on 10 years at Cedar Park Church, and honestly, I am so grateful that the Lord called my family to this place, and it is an amazing place to serve, and it has been an amazing place to raise my family, and I'm just so grateful. <clears throat> During first service, I was worshiping, and it dawned on me that it was my son's last Sunday here at Cedar Park before he heads off to college, and I was so grateful for the impact that Cedar Park has had on him because as he goes off as an adult into his own, you know, thing that God is calling him to do, you know, I w realized that I am confident and secure in the direction that my son is going because of the values that Cedar Park has put inside him and the things that Cedar Park Ministries have taught him, like he is good to go. And so I am so grateful to be a part of this church. And so when, I, when we talk about the people of God and what does that mean, well, look around you today. We are, at a practical level, a gathering of the people of God. That is who we are. And there are both corporate and individual distinctions to the people of God. And so I'm going to talk about both today. And so we'll start with some individual distinctions. And we're going to be in Romans 12 today. And so if you want to turn there in your Bible or pull it up on your smartphone, that would be great. It gives a really good roadmap, this chapter does, of the, what the individual person of God looks like. Awesome. Well, we're going to start in verse 2, and it says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You see it all around us today, the world system which is the popular culture and the ways of thinking that are in rebellion to God. But you see that world system try and conform us to this ungodly pattern. And the way that we resist that conforming is letting God change the way that we think. The battleground between conforming and transforming is in the mind. So when we talk about God renewing our mind, that is why, is because that's the battleground between conforming to what the world is trying to have us conform to or being who God has called us to be. And so with that in mind, with trans transforming of our mind, Christians must think differently differently. Do you find yourself thinking differently in situations sometimes and go, man, I think I am all alone in this. You're not. That is just the way that a Christian thinks. And so when we come together, there is this common bond of thinking differently than the world thinks and not conforming to the behavior and customs of the world. And so that's the foundation that we're going to build off of today. Transformed individuals, that's what sets us apart. As a Christ follower or as people of God, we represent Christ and that is our goal and we want to represent him well. Second Corinthians 5.20 says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Early Christians, when they read this, when they heard this, they saw that ambassador as someone who represented one state or land to another an official representative of the one who sent them. So they were treated with utmost respect and utmost honor. And in turn, they were to represent the person with utmost respect and utmost honor. The same description of what we would call political ambassadors today. So as we are representatives or ambassadors of God, we are to showcase Christ and deliver his message so that others can come to know him. We have been sent to speak on his behalf. Matthew 18, 20 says, for where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. A church can gather in his name because it agrees upon his name. Who Jesus is and what he has done. That's what makes this gathering different from any other gathering you can be at. This is a unique gathering that we are a part of. We gather in different places in our life and different parts of our world. We can gather together with people, but there is something different when God's people come together. I was with my daughter this week in her softball team, and so I was gathered with a group of people all week long watching softball, and let me tell you, 
there is a difference in that gathering. Here, we are all pointed in the same direction. We want the same things. We have the same goals, the same vision. But when you are together with a bunch of crazy sports parents, that is not all the case. Let me tell you, they are like, okay, it's all about my kid. Yeah, we want to win, but it's about my kid and their playing time and all of that. And so you feel like you're pulled in different directions and you're sitting next to somebody and you're like, I don't think we're really on the same page. So it's so nice to come back in and be here today and be all on the same page and be with my people, the people of God. And so this is a a fantastic place to be. Well, then Jesus, he seals this gathering with his presence. That's what it says. So when Jesus says he's here, he means that this gathering, it represents him. It speaks for him. It bears his authority. He identifies himself with it. So the gathered church together is like an embassy. We are ambassadors coming together at a physical location. You know, when you are in another country and say your passport expires, you can't just write down on your passport renewed and stamp it with a fake stamp and call it good. You don't have that authority to do that. But when you go into an an embassy, The embassy has the right to speak on behalf of the American government. And so they can renew your passport. It's the same as when we come together. There is a special authority that we have when we come together that's different than the individual authority that we have. When you step into an embassy, they'll tell you that you're stepping onto American soil. No matter where that embassy is, no matter if that country that it is in hates America and everything that it stands for, the authority of the U.S. government controls that space that you walk into. Just as when you walk into this building here, the kingdom of God has sanctified and has authority in this space that we are in. While every embassy is situated on a foreign land and foreign soil, it doesn't abandon the American policies and rules and regulations. It doesn't abandon them. It's standing in a physical location in another country, but its allegiance and devotion and commitment are pointed elsewhere. Wherever the church finds itself, No matter how antagonistic the surrounding soil is to the things that we know as truth according to God's word, no matter how antagonistic to the heart, mind, and character of God, remember as we are standing here in this building, we are the embassy for the kingdom of God. We represent Jesus and stand in a different authority. We do not conform to the behavior and customs of the land and the world around us. That is the beauty of coming together in a physical place and gathering together with God's people. There is a different authority that we stand in when we stand inside this place. And when people say that the church is people, not a place, There's some truth to that because when you go out, you're still the church. When you go out from this place, you're still the church because the church remains even when we're not gathered. Seven days a week, the church remains. My daughter, my older daughter, is also on a softball team and she's here today. And um, just because she is here in Washington and not in Florida does not mean that she's not a part of that softball team. But the church becomes a church by gathering in a place. You can technically be a church member and not go to church and not go to gathering together with other believers. Technically, you could be. But are you really a part of that church? The same as my daughter. Is she really a part of the team if she never shows up for practices, never shows up for games? You get disconnected pretty quickly, don't you? The team leaves you behind and you stop contributing and stop the team from moving forward when you're not gathered with them. And so in the Old Testament, um, God commanded that the temple be built with very specific instructions. Every detail was something to look at and to see physical beauty, everything, stones, fabric, expert craftsmanship, gold, silver, precious stones of every color, That is what God designed the temple to be, is something beautiful to look at. 
God has designed our church today with that same beauty, that same exact beauty as we gather together. So these things that we, that we look at in our church and do in our church, specific components that God has given us when we gather together as his people, this is like the precious stones that were used in the building of the temple. And I have to say that I'm pretty happy because I love bling. I really, really do. God loves bling too because he decorated the entire temple with it and his church today. And so here we go. So I am going to equate these things that the, the Lord has told us to do when we come together as the precious stones that were put in place in the, in the temple. So that first precious stones when we gather together, God commands us to, that the preaching of the word happens. That is one of the things that, um, that he asks and tells us to do. You know why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we are gathered together with other believers each and every week, all of our faith is being increased each and every week. We gather to equip believers, us, for the work of the ministry. We're equipped each and every week for the work of the ministry by the preaching of the word. To live as God's witnesses or ambassadors to the world. When we hear these messages of God's word, it's more than information. It's spiritual formation that is happening inside us. We collectively obey and follow his commands every single Sunday. Another precious stone that he has put into the place is communion. Jesus told us to do this often and remember the work that he did on the cross. And so as Cedar Park Church, we have um, said that we are going to gather together for communion once a month corporately together. I know there's other people that, that do communion on their own and in your home, and that is a beautiful thing. But man, when you come together corporately, there is something beautiful that happens. And last week was Communion Sunday, and Pastor Steve, um, at the end of his message, had us all come down forward and receive communion along the front in here. And let me tell you what a beautiful way that was to receive communion. When you're a little bit separated in seats, you know, it's a little bit of a personal thing. Okay, thank you, Lord. But when you come together and gather together, it was so beautiful to be right next to somebody who is thanking God for the same exact thing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for what you have given me. Thank you, Jesus, for that work on the cross. And when we often remember remember often what he did, it renews something inside of us. You know, as you're sitting there, you're thinking, man, the stripes that you bore on the cross, that was for my physical healing. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So guess what? If there is a physical healing that I need in my body right then and there, I'm going to ask and I am going to believe and I am going to declare healing over my body because my faith has been renewed by thanking the Lord for what he has done. So that is another part of um, gathering together as believers. And the next precious stone that we see in these gatherings is worship, declaring the majesty of God. Ephesians 5.19 tells us that we should speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. So this is a corporate worship that he is talking about. And worship, we also worship on earth as it is in heaven. When Alex was leading today, he um, spoke a verse, and I'm going to repeat it right here, Revelation 4, 8, day after day and night after night. They keep, on, they keep on saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the one who always was, who is, and who is to come. We are declaring that he is holy. We are declaring that he is mighty. We're declaring that he is worthy of all the praise and all the glory that we are giving him. That is our declaration. It isn't about music. It isn't about style. It's about declaring who God is. And it's a very important component when we come together as believers. The next stone that we see, beautiful, precious stone, um, when we come together is spiritual gifts in action. This is one of my favorites. The people of God gathered together as a church and as one unified body, yet we're still distinct within that body. There is unity, not uniformity. While we're all individuals with individual gifts, they aren't being used unless we are all gathered together with God's people. And so let's go back to Romans 12 and start in verse four. 
and read about spiritual gifts. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. These gifts that he is talking about can't work in the fullness of what they are designed to be unless we are gathered together. If you are the hand, you don't work well by yourself without the whole arm. And the only way that the whole arm is going to be here is if the whole body of Christ gathers together in one place. There needs to be an entire body for your peace to work. One of the biggest ploys of the enemy is isolation, right? You're saying, oh, you're not needed. You're not necessary. You don't have anything to give. But if you're not gathering, the body cannot function in its entirety. And this is a time where we need to step up. We need to step up and in, out into the gifts that God has called us or given us and do what God has called us to do. One of the things that I do here is, um, as I'm the small groups pastor, once a quarter, we do a groups launch. And if you've been to one of those before, we usually set out food and have a party and just celebrate what God's doing and encourage people to get into community. Well, if you have ever done an event and you have served food, what is the worst part of the event right there? Yep, the dishes. Cleaning up the kitchen is the absolute worst part. A couple, a couple years ago, a gentleman in our church heard about our group launch and knew that there were, you know, tasks that needed to be done. And he comes to me and he says, you know what? I'd like to do all the dishes at the end of your group launch. Praise the Lord, let me tell you for that man. <laughs> let me tell you. And he said, don't put me out front. I don't want to be talking to people. That's not my gift. But man, I know that God has given me a heart of servanthood. And if I could just serve behind the scenes, that would just bless me tremendously. And so every single group launch, he marks it on his calendar. As soon as he sees it in the bulletin, he comes to me and he goes, I'm on for dishes, right? Like it's a privilege to him. Because it is. I mean, could you imagine serving like that? But you know what the coolest thing about that is? Is that him going into the kitchen to serve in that capacity frees me up to go serve in my capacity. Now, while I do dishes, well, I mean, my husband's here, so I'll be honest, not that often. Let's just say I don't do dishes that often. Praise the Lord, I am a blessed woman. But I can do dishes, okay? I can clean up. Um, it's not that I wouldn't do it, but if I was doing that, I wouldn't be out where my primary gift is, which is encouraging others and, and connecting people to people and getting people involved in community. That would be my primary gift. And so without him working in his gift, it, I would not be freed up to do my gift. And so there isn't one gift that is better than the other, that is more special than the other, that is more important than the other. Every gift has its place in the body of Christ. Amen. So we need to step out. And the scriptures say that God has given you a gift. So if in your mind you're saying, yeah, I'm not gifted in anything, that is not true. Scripture says God has given each one of us a gift, each one of us a gift. And so pray and ask the Lord to show you, show you what that gift is. And then ask him how you can serve his kingdom with that gift. And he'll show you. He will be very faithful in that. Another stone, precious stone that we see, a piece of bling, is community. That is one of the things that, is, that God has given us. And as Doug read that message when he was sharing a little bit ago, I'm going to repeat that, um, uh, that scripture in Hebrews 10, 25 that he shared. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. There needs to be ongoing discipleship that's happening. There needs to be a accountability in our life. There needs to be friendship in our life. God created us for community. So if you're sitting here today going, man, I really, 
I would really like some friends in my life. That's how God created you. That is why it is so important to gather with like-minded people who are seeking to grow in their walk with the Lord. And that is why it's very important for you to be involved in a small group. That's where this happens at Cedar Park Church, is that's where we find community. You can find some community on a Sunday morning, but the gathering, the smaller gathering, that's where true community is found. And it's why it's so important as believers to be with other believers. Last year, when we were able to gather again after not being able to for a while, um, I just had the prompting and the leading from the Lord that I wanted to study the word of God like never before. I'm talking, I just had this desire to dig into God's word and know exactly what it was talking about because I needed to know truth because there were a lot of words swirling around me and I wanted to know what was the truth. And so I decided that I would bring my women's Bible study along with me. And so we went through several books that taught us the importance of God's word, how to study God's word, get down to the nitty gritty of language and culture and all of those amazing things. And we were coming together every week and we could have done this on our own. You could do that on your own, but there is something beautiful when you gather together and iron sharpens iron and you really encourage each other in your walk. Um, one of the gals um, had a friend who was sharing her opinion and telling her, you know, she, her opinion was right. Um, and she used a scripture to back up her opinion. And this gal in my Bible study was like, it just didn't sit well. It just did not sit well. And so she did what we had been studying and she went back to God's word and she studied that verse in context, which was a lot of what we were talking about is, what is the whole context of that scripture mean? And she realized it meant something completely different than her friend was saying. And so she could stand in confidence that she was not wavering and she did not have to follow the opinion of her friend because she truly knew the truth of what God's word meant. And let me tell you the celebration that we had celebrating with our sister for her growing in her walk with the Lord and knowledge of the Lord. It was a beautiful thing. And so that's one of the powerful things about coming together in community. Another plug for groups is for if your gifting is teaching, encouraging, leadership, those types of things, we have a group leader training this month actually. And so if God is just prompting your heart that you need to step out and really serve in the gift that he has given you, um, it's a perfect timing. We have that. You can check uh, next week's bulletin for all the information. And then if you are not a part of a group right now and God is stirring something in your heart, our fall groups launch will be next month. And so all of our groups will launch um, in September. And so I just want to encourage you to get involved in a group, get involved in community. And so that is how we gather when we're together. But why do we gather? Why is it so important for the people of God to gather together? Well, the primary purpose of a church service for you coming in here today is it's a gathering of God's people coming together. That's the primary purpose of a church service. That's the primary purpose of the gathering. Contrary to popular belief, scripture does not tell us that the gathering is the primary evangelistic tool in the body of Christ. It doesn't say that. Scripture tells us that you and me are God's primary evangelistic tool. We are are the ambassadors saying, come back to God. That's our message to carry. While the church does still have some evangelistic functions, it's not the primary place for evangelism. That is the individual's job. That is our job as a Christ follower, you and me. So when our when people ask our pastor why he isn't tailoring the services to unbelievers, that's why. Unbelievers don't carry out the functions of a gathering of God's people. God's people carry out the functions of a gathering of God's people. But... But we always give an opportunity for people to come to know Jesus in every one of our services. Every one of our services. We pray for people that are close to our heart and far from God regularly. 
The church is working in tandem with the ministry that the individuals are doing outside the four walls of the church. And so, yes, bring your unsaved friends to church. They are going to um, receive a message of hope. They're going to hear a message of peace. They're going to hear a message that tells them the truth of who Jesus Christ is and what he did for them. They are going to hear that, and then they will have an opportunity to come to know Jesus. But that evangelism starts before you walk in the door. It starts with you. It starts, a it starts with a conversation that you are having with them. And so that is, the, that is the goal and that is the purpose of the church is we are a gathering of God's people. And our church gatherings, they need to be a representation of what we see in heaven. Revelation 7, 9 says, After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation, tribe, people, language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. This multitude represents every nation, tribe, people, group, language, what a strong reminder of God's heart for all people and that all people are precious to him. No race, ethnicity, background, generation, you know, the things that the world would use to separate and divide us, none of those are exempt from God's love. We as a church represent God's heart for all people. Those identities of race, background, age, those all become secondary to our true identity, which is God, the family of God. That is our true identity. We are all one in Jesus. So as a church, as Cedar Park Church, we strive to be a church for all people, all generations, all nations, and all stations of life. All nations, generations, all stations of life. And the reason why is because we want to be a beautiful reflection of what we see in heaven. We just want to be what we see in heaven. We want to bring down here on earth. And so that is something that we, um, that we endeavor to do. And there is nothing, nothing as beautiful as the gathering of God's people in church. And so, of course, there are churches that we could look at and say, man, I feel like they're missing the mark. If we look hard enough, we could probably find something wrong with every gathering. But that's not where we're to focus on. That's not the focus. The focus is the beauty of what God has created. When I was praying about this message, I was like, God, the people of God, I could go in like 50 different directions. Where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? And I was just praying and praying and praying. And I was on my way to work one day. And I just heard distinctly God say, just tell them about the beauty that I have created for them. Tell them about the beauty that is the gathering of my people. And I said, yes, God, it is a beautiful thing. And I am so grateful that he has designed that for us. And so this is something that we shouldn't take lightly. It's something that we, sh we can't just take or leave something that we just, you know, um, treat really casual. This is something that God designed for us to be a part of. He's commanded each and every, that every day as we gather, as we gather, it's like we are gathering on hostile soil, but remember, God's presence is with us. We are functioning as he designed, and he can't help but bless what we are doing. He can't help but bless that. It's a beautiful thing. I was, um, you know, during first service, somebody was watching the live stream, and I was preaching on just, you know, this, this message, how important it is for us to gather together and, um, and to not take that lightly. And she sat there in her home, repented to the Lord, said, God, I've been, care I've been treating that very lightly. So she got herself ready and drove down here for church during second service. And it was so great because I saw her walk in the door and I haven't seen her in a while. And I greeted her and I said, I am so glad you're here. I said, you just bless me by being here. And I didn't know what she was walking in from. I just thought it was, you know, she was here today. And she said, that means a lot because I wasn't going to be here. But I really felt like the Lord moved on my heart to be here. And I really have taken it casually. And she said, and this is something precious to be a part of. What a blessing that is. And so as we as individuals come in and gather, we go out each week, right? So we come in and gather as God people and we go out each week. So let's go back to Romans 12 and let's see what this looks like and what happens when we go out. It says, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. 
Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. You know, I see the evidence of those verses all around us in our church. There are so many ministries flowing out from this church each and every week that do just that. They endeavor to love each other, to help people in need, to work hard for advancing the kingdom of God. This is ever an ever-growing endeavor to follow the will of God There's always room for improvement, but man, when you are doing exactly what God is calling you to do right now, loving other people, he blesses that. He can't help but bless that. And so our prayer should constantly be, God, I want to help the people that nobody else will. I want to love the people that nobody else will. I want to help the people that could never help me back, and I wanna love the people that will never love me back. This is representing Christ well, both individually in your own life and then corporately as a church. That is what we say is we want to help and love people in our community. I'm gonna invite the the worship team to come up and we're getting ready to close. And I just have a couple questions for us today. Us, meaning me and you. And the questions are, are we taking our role as ambassador seriously? Do people look at us and see that there is something different? Do people want to know this Jesus that you represent? Are you representing him well? And have we been casual about coming together and gathering together as the people of God? For a body to function as it should, All the parts need to be present each and every Sunday. And so have we been saying, oh man, I went last week. I think I'll stay home this week. Are we saying, no, it's important when I walk in the door because there is a gift that God has placed inside me that can bless somebody else just by being there. So have we been casual? Have we been taking our role seriously? And then today, if you find yourself today that you are far from God, maybe you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you did at one time and now you're finding yourself far from him, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to him today. So with every eye closed, head bowed, I'm going to ask a question. Are you where you should be with the Lord today? Are you serving him with your whole heart or are you finding yourself far, far away from him? If you're finding yourself far away from the Lord today, just lift up your hand if you would like to come back to him today and say, yes, Jesus. Say, yes, Jesus, today. If you wanna say yes to him today, go ahead and lift up your hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, will you stand with me for a word of prayer to close out the service today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that we have had to come together as the people of God. Thank you for the beauty that you created in the gatherings each and every week. Thank you, Lord. I just pray that you would forgive us where we haven't taken our role seriously in your body. Thank you, Lord. Help us to see that our gifts that you have given us are only used when we are in community. Help us to be the best representative of you in this dark world. Show us the people that we are to speak a word of truth to. God, help us to see that this gathering today is the beauty that you designed, not an idea invented by man. This is spiritual ground that we are standing on. Help us to stand in your authority. And I thank you that your word says that the gates of hell will not prevail against your church. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing Cedar Park Church and the ministries that flow out of it each and every week. I pray a blessing over our pastor Jay. God, continue to speak to him about the direction 
for Cedar Park Church. Continue to bless the work of our hands. In your precious name we pray, amen, amen. Well, if you would like to come to the altar for any um, prayer, there's gonna be pastors down here that would love to pray for you. And other than that, have a blessed week. so grateful that you joined us here today at Cedar Park Church. We know there's a lot of ways that you could be spending your time, but we're thankful that you are here with us. And we pray that it was a meaningful time, that you were encouraged, that you heard from the Lord. That's right. And even though we're separated by time and space, we want you to know that it's important to us that you're with us today. And we're praying for you and believing in God's best for your life. And whether you're watching online because you're traveling or out of town, or maybe you're just checking out church, we would love the opportunity to say hello to you in person soon. So may God bless you and thanks for spending your time with us today.